Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 036 0703 768 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I'd like to begin by first of all looking at what essentially has taken place. What is it that has happened as we saw Jesus took our old man to the cross. It was important what happened to you yesterday was very important. And I again wish to say to you that what we look for was not empty knowledge. What we look for was not a good explanation. What we long to experience is a revelation of Christ dealing with our old nature. And unless you see it, it never becomes yours. Sometimes you hear and sometimes we think that hearing is enough. But a mental knowledge only pops up. All men that have had victory in their work with God, they had come in a living encounter with the reality of what happens at the cross. Hallelujah. What happened at the cross is actually, if I now want to begin to draw issues, the cross is the terminal that terminated our old life. And the cross is also that terminal that launches us into a walk with God. If I were to have my blackboard here, if we were in a classroom situation, I would have loved to draw to show you that the cross stands at the middle point of any man's life. The cross is a divide. It's a divide between that which is old and that which is new. Please listen to me. Theologically, praise the Lord, theologically, when you talk about the Old Testament and the New Testament, some of us sometimes used to think that the Old Testament is just because of that blank page that separated between the book of Malachi and the book of Matthew. But I must say to you that the New Testament did not begin until the cross took place. Are we together? Everything that had happened why Jesus Christ lived for 33 and a half years among us and he walked among us he was dealing he was simply demonstrating and establishing that there could be a man who will condemn who will condemn the blackmail of Satan over mankind 
He walked victoriously for those 33 years in order to give us an example that we may walk in his steps. But do you know that as our brother drew us to John chapter 12 this morning, one very critical matter that Jesus Christ had to confront is that God confronted him saying, unless the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it does what? It abides alone. It's only at his death on the cross that was when it became possible for other men and women like me and you to actually become new creation that can follow in his steps. You can never follow in his steps. You cannot walk with God while you carry the rebel in your bosom. I don't know what you're hearing me. Working with God is not possible when the man that you carry inside your bosom is the flesh. The Bible says the flesh cannot please God. No matter how you try, the flesh cannot please God. Indeed, it cannot. That's how the word of God put it. So the cross was the terminating point for our old man. So permit me to spend a bit of time this morning to begin to look at what actually happened at the cross in order for our work with God into his works to be possible. Hallelujah. And as we examine what happened at the cross, again, in case yesterday you didn't look intently to the man of Calvary, in case yesterday you were preoccupied with many other issues in your mind, can I beg you, take off your eyes from everything else and fix your gaze as we begin to examine Jesus on the pages of scriptures this morning. Why do I say that to you? I want to tell you my personal testimony. I want to tell you that if, if we talk of zeal, I was very zealous. If we talk about determination to really want to serve God, I was. If we talk about fasting and praying to overcome the flesh, I tried. And if it is to go from one conference to another to meet those men of God that we thought had power, and I were holy. I think I tried. And I thought that if I just moved close to some men that I thought have power and that they are living victoriously that I will get victory. While I thank God for all these men, none helped me until I found the man of Calvary at the cross. The passages we were reading yesterday that look casual to you, they are not casual passages. They are the same truth that will set you free for life. Am I communicating with you? They are the same truth. I've been reading those truths for decades now. But it has never faded. I'm never familiar with it. So this morning, permit me to engage you a bit. I, want, I, I really seriously wish we can engage one another and look at what exactly was the transaction 
at the cross? What was the transaction? What really happened? And how can we maximize the benefit of the cross in our work with God into his works? Do you think we should do that this morning? Eh? One thing I just desire of you is that the climax of the ministry of Jesus when he was here on earth was not when he raised Lazarus from the dead. Are we together? It was not when he fed 5,000. It was not when he turned water to wine. It was not when he spoke to the man who was crippled for 38 years and the man walked. The climax of his ministry was not because he opened the eyes of blind Bartimaeus and other more blind men. No. Actually, when the whole world were dancing around him and saying, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, the Lord Jesus knew. He said, unless the corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it does what? It abides alone. But if it falls down and dies, what will happen? It will bring forth many, 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 many fruits. And I heard Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will do what? I will do what? You know, every time we read that scripture, I say, if I draw all men, I mean, if I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. We always think, listen to me, we always think it meant that uh, if I'm lifted. So the song we compose around is Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher. For he says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto me. That was a miscontext. That song is a wrong context. Hallelujah. You see, lift Jesus higher. In the understanding that we are singing it is that we should do what? Exalt Jesus. Exalt Jesus. Exalt Jesus. But that is not the context of John chapter 12 verse 32 where that scripture came. Can somebody read John 12 verse 32? Why am I parabolating? I wanted to begin by looking at what is the transaction at the cross? The more you understand, the more you see what happened at the cross, the more your journey with God will become smooth, will become progressive, will become fruitful, and will become, you know, uh, fulfilling. John 12, who is there? Aha. Verse 33. Let's see what the meaning of that. You see now. So you see, if I be lifted up from the earth, many of us, we thought he was talking of ascension. Many of us, we thought we are just talking about no, that's a good song to lift Jesus high. Eh? You know the other one we used to sing. Jesus Jesus Those are very great songs. But that's not the context of John 12. What is the context of John 12? If I be lifted up from the earth, 
and put on the cross. I withdraw all men. I want you to know that the cross was the basis. It was the beginning. It was the tyranny into the new covenant that makes deliverance from the power of sin and from the power of Satan possible. And every time any man wants to walk with God, please hear me. Oh, are you hearing me? Anytime a man wants to walk with God victoriously, where must he take his bearing from? He has to take his bearing from what happened at the cross. If you do not take your bearing from what happened at the cross, you don't have a bearing yet. Your work will be wobbling because it has not taken its bearing from the correct bearing. Is that clear? Is it clear? Whereas there are many, many, many people, Old Testament saints, that lived before the cross happened. Can you mention some of their names, please? Abraham, eh? Moses, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Daniel, Jeremiah, Nehemiah, Mordecai, Esther, these are great brothers and sisters. But may I tell you something? Why they did their best? Seeking to serve God. They did that in anticipation of the cross. Even though we have so many great lessons to learn from their lives, the truth of the matter is that we couldn't follow them. Why couldn't we follow them? The struggle they had was the struggle of that inherent old man waiting to be brought to a terminal at the cross. So even though as a preacher, the entire scripture from Genesis is wonderful, but if you read it very clearly, you will notice that all of them, all the scripture from Genesis, they were anticipating Jesus coming to Calvary. So Jesus said, you search the scriptures for you think in them you have eternal life but these are they that do what? Testify of me. Whatever happened in the Old Testament that we could have capitalized upon, they were only a shadow of what God was looking for. So the picture that we could trace from the Old Testament left and right, there are only pictures pointing at a reality. That reality is Christ. And that reality for us began when? At the cross. When he went to Calvary.
So as we now spend a bit of space of time to look at the transaction at the cross, what essentially does the cross stand for in our work with God? How do we take our bearing, even bearing of ministry, from that transaction? How do we take our bearing, even our bearing of, of, of doing God's work from that transaction? This will become a lifelong study. And I want to tell you that what you are starting today is not a topic. You know, as pastors, we like to preach topics. Abi, eh? Anytime you want to preach, the first thing that you are concerned with is what? Topic. So I've preached, I preach on that topic. I preach on that topic. I want to tell you that men of old don't preach topics. They preached a person. They preach Jesus. They preach the inexhaustible Christ. Hallelujah. Say, and Philip went to Samaria and he did what? And he preached Jesus. And beginning at that scripture, Philip opened his mouth and he did what? And he preached Jesus. Paul said, whom we teach and we preach. Do you remember? Eh? So, we will take the immediate space that we have now to examine that transaction. And I would like you to come the passage we read yesterday, we shall read it again. And but this time we're seeking to understand what essentially happened at the cross. For me to kick off, I want you to take your Bibles and read First Corinthians chapter one. I mean chapter two. Even chapter one would have been good to start with. First Corinthians. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. Let's be moving fast. Today is going to be quite um, intensive in terms of study. So we must be studying fast. Are we there? Are we there? I need to be hearing from you so I'll be sure that we are together. Are we there together? Aha. Uh -huh. Verse 17, verse 18. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words lest the cross of Christ should be what? Should be made of non-effect. How did NIV put verse 17 in place? For Christ did not send me to baptize but to preach the gospel not with words of human wisdom lest the cross of Christ be what? Be emptied of his power. Is there any other version that says something that is striking about that verse 17? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. What version is that? Eh? 
Thank you. Thank you. Any other version? Yes, sir. Hmm, thank you. What are you standing for? All right. Not in cleverness of speech. So that the cross of Christ will not be made void. So where is message? He did not send you out to collect a following for yourself. Uh -huh. Be trivialized into mere empty words. Brothers, are you preachers here? You are preachers here. Can you pray that you will not be trivializing the work that Jesus did on the cross? Can you pray that you will not preoccupy your church members with stories, with rhetorics, with drama, such that the cross will be emptied of its power? The first thing I want to note from that scripture before I go on is that the cross, at the cross, there was a release of power. Please get it now. I'm dealing with what transaction took place at the cross. What happened at the cross? What is it that took place at the cross? When our old man was crucified with him, what is it? The first thing that I want to note with you is that the cross was a release of the power of God. And because the cross is the power of God, Paul said, I do not go about, you know, he said, God did not send me to go about baptizing. You know, that looks contradictory, isn't it? Are we not to baptize? Didn't the Bible say, go into all the world and preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father? Do you remember that? How could Paul say, God did not send me to baptize? Is baptism not part of our commission? May I say to you, baptism is only a fallout of what we have been called to do. Baptism, as wonderful as it is, is only but a symbol of a reality. But the reality cannot take place until the cross had been dealt with. Do you know that many of you sitting before me now, but I don't want you to have doctrinal confusion, oh, are, we, are you hearing me? I don't want you to go back now and begin to look for other doctrines. No. But if I tell you the truth, the truth of the matter is that many of you got baptized, you only wash. If you want to hear me very well, baptism is only possible for a man who has experienced death. Baptism is only a burial service. But excuse me, when do you do burial service? 
Eh? Excuse me. Can I call a man who is not dead? And we say we are doing his burial service. Do you do that in your church? Baba, tell me, please. When do you do burial service? Eh? When a man is dead, is confirmed. Everybody has wept. Then I say, when are we going to bury him? It's a public announcement to say this man is dead and is to be buried. Do you know that you have no right to baptize a man who have not died? They know you not. As many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, we were baptized into what? Is death, not into water. Water baptism only comes because death has occurred. Now, if when you go from here now and and Death as of course. Your old man is dead. You now know I'm dead. If you now like, you can do a burial service, which we called water baptism. But you remember you were baptized many years ago when your old man was still alive. That was what I did. was so eager to be baptized and I remember some of my guys my colleagues we passed the the eh, the baptismal class because we are brilliant ha, yeah, 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 yeah. what does Baptist people believe S uh, justification justification by faith justification by faith where do you find justification by faith Galatians 2.16 that we know that no man is justified by the works of the law. They marked it. This, they are all here. You wake me up in the night. And they said, regeneration, regeneration, washing of water by the word. Washing of water by the word. Quote three Bible verses that point to the fact of washing of water by the word, regeneration by the word of God. Oh, Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 36, Ezekiel 36, 25. I marked. Titus 3, 5. Marked. See. When we passed like that, what did we do? We went out like this. Arrogant! That's them old man. <laughs> we were very, very serious because, you know, even to know Bible, was one of our special, special area. So when a pastor is preaching, and he did not quote a particular reference very well, eh? he's preaching and he quoted a passage and he didn't quote it very well, maybe with wrong reference. We stood up, I will read to him the passage he wanted to quote. You see, I said, but wrong reference. You wanted John chapter 5, verse 14, but you called John 14, verse 5. Wrong reference. Then they will look at me, and all the people, they say, <laughs> my pastor then say, <laughs> we, we have a man here. It's en so, en encyclopedia, encyclopedia. And we were so... So when any visiting pastor comes, he just carried me to her and introduced me and he said, this man will assist you. Any passage you are looking for, in five seconds he will get it for you. Even if you forget the Bible verse, 
just describe what you are looking for. He will get it for you. So I don't hear the word of God. I go to church to display. We are busy marking the preacher. Old man. Even knowledge. Old man will capture it. So at the cross, something took place. The power of God was released to destroy the power of sin and the power of Satan. That's the first transaction that we are noting here. But taking our bearing from that scripture, he now says, but the preaching of the cross to them that perish. What is it? What is it? It's foolishness, but to us which are saved. What is it? It's the power of God. So, the first point I'm raising is that the cross releases the power of God. The more you understand the cross, the more you take bearing from the cross, you have power to work with God. Whereas, when some of us began to look for power, we were looking for arbitrary power for ministry. Power. So when a man of God can say, you will power, 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 Holy Ghost power, Holy Ghost power, 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 power. So we thought that by shouting power, 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 power. You see, when you have shouted that for, for a long time, definitely you will fall down. Definitely you will foam in your mouth. Isn't it? Definitely you will say some, some words that are not coordinated again because you're already disoriented. You see, we were excited. We thought that that is power. When we finished all of that and we stood up, there was no power. There was more noise, there was no power. Where is power? Where is the real power? The power that confronts men and changes men. You will see, even the power to do miracles only emanates from the preaching of the cross. Because it is at the cross that the power of God was released to confront the power of sin that has kept men isolated from connection with the power of God. Oh my God, do you understand what I'm talking about? Because sin insulates a man from the source of divine energy. And do you know the power of God, listen to me, is completely inexhaustible. I don't know how to say what I want to say, but God will help me this morning with you. I want you to know that with God, how many things are possible? All things are possible. And that with God, power doesn't finish. God is never exhausted. God can do anything, anytime, anywhere, anyhow. God can call into existence those things that be not as though they were. Are you getting me? And but because God's power, if he could just get a man like me to connect to that power, what do I become now? I just become a channel 
through it, that power will reach people. But do you know what sin did? Who knows what sin did? Sin came and short circuited, created an insulation, created a separation so that look at the unlimited power of God here and look at me here and look at thousands of people that are suffering that I'm supposed to bless and all I needed was to have connected and power will have flow to people are you hearing me now so what did sin do sin went to that source and disconnected me from socket I can now keep struggling and the people that I'm supposed to be reaching, they are struggling. Because I couldn't connect power to reach them. Am I communicating with you? So because sin cuts a man short, the power of God is largely, largely unknown. Largely unexperienced. Largely untapped. Even majority of preachers are you hearing me? They can make noise. They can do activities. They can do many things. But because Mr. Flesh has disconnected them from power, they can only do their own thing, nothing. So what did the cross do? The cross of Jesus confronted sin. took it out of the way and broke the veil are you understanding that makes access to the unlimited power of God possible and that whenever a man gets connected back through the cross through the word God has done at the cross power is released to touch men, to change their situation, to bring them into the right place where they ought to be. So the power that is released because of the cross is because at the cross the major insulation the major blockage, the major separation between us and God was what? Was removed. May I pray with you that several of you that heaven has helped, that God is helping, and you saw that old man taken away and crucified with him. And you saw that a major blockage had been taken out of you for heaven to reconnect with your life. I don't need to talk. Oh, you will come back with testimonies. You will come back with effortless release of the grace of God. Your church congregation, without you making noise, they will begin to ask you, you are affecting us differently from when you, before you left. What did they do to you in Boko? And your answer would just say, I went there to die. Death took place. I know that many of you, you are praying Abik. We used to sing many great songs. I love those songs because it gives me understanding, but very soon I began to see that we have not sang our song very well. You remember the other one we used to talk about? The power of resurrection. The power of resurrection. That I may know him, yes. 
that I may know him, that I may know him, yeah, that I may know him, and his power, and his power, and his power of resurrection, oh, and his power, and his power, oh, and his power of resurrection. Great song, but incomplete. Where do you get power of resurrection? A man who has not died, can he resurrect? So the passage we constructed into a song. Are you hearing me? We omitted something crucial there. So you know I'm beginning to be serious now about checking scriptures. And making sure that we are faithful to Bible. If you read that song, where we got that song? Where did we get that song? That I may know him. Philippians 3.10. Can somebody read Philippians 3.10 and, and discover whether you only talk about power of resurrection? Read it quickly. That I may know him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Did you that? Did you see that? He said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable to what is death. That's what releases the power. The power of resurrection is not an arbitrary power. Is a power that is attached to what? To death. And the more a man is being made conformable to death, the more the power of resurrection manifests in his life. So excuse me, do you need power for ministry? I need to hear you. Do you want power for ministry, power to affect men, where do you report? Report at the cross. I know whenever we are looking for power, I say, that's the impression we have given all our men. That when they need power, they should do what? They are looking up because something is going to fall on the ceiling. How many of you have looked up for the past 10 years? Nothing came. Because power, the power of resurrection only comes where death Honestly speaking, Jesus Christ said to his disciples, he said, Come unto me, all you that test and drink. For out of your belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. The Bible said, This is said concerning the Holy Spirit, which those who believe on him were to receive. But as at that time, the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Why? Because he was not yet glorified. What was he waiting for? He was waiting for the cross to take place. So in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, Peter stood up and said, this Jesus whom ye crucified. Do you remember? The Lord has now raised him up. 
And having been raised up and exalted by the right hand of God, he has now received this, which he has now shed forth, which you now see and hear. He was talking of the Holy Ghost. For unlimited power for ministry, for unlimited anointing for the manifestation of the power of God, and for you to be able to walk into God's works, where do you report? Now, when I say report at the cross, please take note that I'm not talking about going to erect one tree. Please take note of that. Don't go and erect one tree and say, that's not the issue. I want you to know that the cross is an experience. The cross is what? Is an experience. You must keep experiencing the cross if his power will be released in your life. And the experience of the cross, the first thing that it does, I said, it deals decisively with what? With sin, with Mr. Flesh. Hallelujah. Somebody should please go now with me. Just read Romans 6, verse 6. But... I'm still coming to read Romans 6 because it's going to be the next point of understanding the transaction. But someone should just read Romans 6, verse 6 for me, and I want you to read it from Living Bible. We start with King James and then we read Living Bible. Are you having Living Bible, ma'am? All right. That's what I'm looking for. Good, evil desires, Aha. we are nailed to the cross with him. That part of you that loves to sin. That part crushed, of you that loves to sin. Was crushed. Was crushed. And fatally wounded. Ha. So that your sin loving body is no longer under sin's control. No longer needs to be a slave to sin. Uh -huh. For when you are deadened to sin. Yes. You are freed from all its allure. And its power over you. Hallelujah. Where is message? To read that verse 6. I want you to know that he's saying that your old sinful, I mean, sin loving nature. What happened to it at the cross? Sister. Eh? The sister is no more following. She's excited with what she has read. Your old loving, your old sin loving uh, body. What has happened to him? Is 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 wounded and fatally crushed. Where did it happen? At the cross. The cross crushes old nature. I thank some of you that are here wearing the cross as a as what? Thank you very much. It's okay. But I'm begging you. Don't just wear the cross. Die on it. <laughs> you hear me? The cross you wear is not what I'm talking about. Some of you have a very golden cross. Very shiny silver cross. Beautiful whenever you wear it. In fact, you take photograph with it and it's wonderful. That's not the cross I'm talking about. That kind of cross, and please don't misquote me. Don't say, Bragule said we should not wear our cross again. Please wear it. It's your symbol. Please wear it. But before you wear it, 
Make sure you are dead. Make sure death has occurred. I love the Anglican tradition a lot. Unfortunately, we don't have it in the Baptist. Whenever we are doing a procession, do you know that all the priests we are behind what? Somebody carrying the cross in front. And what does that mean? All we are saying is that, look, our entry point into this service is by the cross. None of us can come unless the cross has finished everything about us and has made a way for us. So do you know that one of the prayers you pray as a priest when they want to carry the cross before we start the procession if you are still a correct Anglican there's a prayer we must pray there's a prayer we offer before you know the young man that carried the cross begin to move we say father hide me behind the cross nothing of self nothing of me must be seen or heard i hide myself behind the cross where my old nature was crucified and dispensed with that's the prayer you ought to have prayed before we start the procession. But I see many Anglican priests, they are too much in haste. They just yeah, 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 let's move. I say, where are you going? <laughs> you have missed, you have missed your canon already. You are not understanding what our fathers said because they were meticulous people. Hallelujah. Now, message. Where's message? Could it be any clearer? Will it be any clearer? Our old way of life was nailed to the cross with Christ. A decisive end to that sin miserable life. No longer at sins every beck and call. So what is the transaction at the cross? as far as our old sinful nature is concerned. Excuse me, what is it? It's a decisive end. A fatal accident that crushes it to death. So, brothers and sisters, at the cross, something was crushed. What was crushed? Our old man. Never you forget that. Go on reading. You've not finished. What we believe is this. If we get included in Christ's sin-conquering death, yes. we also get included in his life-saving resurrection. Yes. Thank you very much. Now, do you follow me to this point? So what's the first transaction at the cross? The power is released because the insulation. The insulation. The blockage. That which sent men out of the Garden of Eden in the beginning. Are you understanding that which made it impossible for God to connect with men at the beginning. That which made man to become alienated from God and unable to walk with God, unable to fellowship with God. That which incapacitated man and cut him short and makes him a piece of bread. That which makes man a prey for the devil was 
dealt with decisively at the cross. That's the first transaction that releases the power of God back into my life. I want to tell you something now. That because of what Jesus accomplished for me at the cross, and because my old man was crucified with him, the man that stood between me and God, the man that made struggling, you know, I want to hear God, I can't hear God. I want to talk God, I can't talk God. I want to, I want to move with God, I cannot move with God. I want to obey God, I cannot obey God. I want to serve God, I cannot serve him the way I should serve him. Because one man is inside me, making it impossible. What has happened to that man? What has happened to that man? Crushed, taken out. There is therefore now no condemnation. I want to tell you something, brothers. I can walk now fearlessly into the presence of God. Me and Baba now, we can walk together. Because the dividing line is being destroyed. Oh. Okay, because we are Bible students and Bible scholars, let's read a little more scripture. I'm still dealing with transaction, but I'm struggling with getting you to understand that the essence of the cross is that Mr. Flesh, which is our greatest problem, Brothers and sisters, do you know I've not yet talked about Satan since I've been talking? Eh? Why didn't I talk of Satan? Can I tell you? Can I tell you? If God be for us, you don't understand what I'm talking. Do you know that Satan himself knows? Satan himself knows that as long as God is in communion with this brother, I can do him nothing. And I pray I can put that in your spirit. Do you know as you see me here, hey, praise God, as you see me here by the grace of God, Maybe you are worried about Satan oppressing you, coming to fight you in your house. I am not. The reason is because where I am, Satan cannot get there. Giving thanks to the Father. Who has what? Delivered us. From what? From the kingdom, from the power of darkness. And has done what? Translated us into, into into when he picked me out from the kingdom of darkness. Satan was looking like this. Looking like this. But what can he do? What gave him power over me was what Jesus crushed at the cross. Am I communicating with you? And when God picked me out, he said, so you are going with him? So you are going with him? He said, yes. What, what do you have to hold him back? And I'm translated into the kingdom of his dear son in the light. That's where I am now. My life is hid in Christ, in God. We'll be talking about that. And Satan can only look like this. Sometimes 
he will make face. Sometimes he may abuse me. Sometimes he may do anything. No problem. But there's only one matter. He said, hmm, how can I get him? Except I create a situation that will make God to do what? To throw him out. What is that situation? Iniquity. But iniquity was crushed. Where? At the cross. Because of the transaction at the cross, a work with God becomes possible. And may I beg you that the first matter that I want God to write in your spirit is that because your old man is dead, a relationship with God, a communion with God, a friendship with God, a work with God has been initiated and it must run without interruption by the grace of God. Are we together to that point? That is the first transaction. But let's go further and look at what is the other transaction that also took place at the cross. What is it that happened before I will deal with the application into our lives very soon? Praise the Lord. Now, I want you to return to, second, I mean, to, to Colossians that we read yesterday. You know we read Colossians yesterday. Can we read it again? Let's read Colossians again. Are you in Colossians? Eh? Chapter 2. Chapter 2. All of you, please get to that. Don't take any verse for granted. If you have your Bible, as we are reading, some scripture will be jumping at you. Please mark them. In whom also, that's verse 11, you are circumcised with the circumcision made with our hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Bury with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the oppression of God, who has raised him from the dead. And you, and you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, as he quickened together with him, having forgiven you, how many things? All trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross and having spoiled principalities and powers what did he do he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it let's stop there meanwhile we are dealing with transactions at the cross. Can you, are you alert? Are you alert? Are we together? Can we now take verse 40? Verse 40 and verse 15. Let's see what we are dealing with here. Blotting out what the handwriting of ordinances 
that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross i'm dealing with transaction at the cross so can someone help me read that verse 14 verse 14 where is go to niv first niv auntie what did you want to read for me good news right i will take good news from you having cancelled the written code with its regulations that was against us uh -huh. and that stood opposed to us uh -huh. he took it away yes leaning it to the cross wait wait thank you my dear sister repeat it i want all of you to be listening carefully since you are not carrying the niv yes ma'am having cancelled the written code having cancelled the written code with its regulations yes that was against us that was against me and that stood opposed to us this written code and all their regulations they stood opposed anytime i want to make progress there are things that have been written he took wait wait mom don't worry you are my assistant now just keep standing until you are tired now there are things that were written the bible said they were written codes they were the handwritings that stood against us contrary to us every time i want to make progress somebody reaches out to those codes and said do you intend brother Bile, to progress even if god said yes he said for your information look at these things that he has done where will you keep this and you will still promote him i raise objections sir and as long as those written code is standing objections carried so at the cross Jesus did not only crush our old man. Are you hearing me? He also reached out unto what has been written that has been kept in the archives of Satan that is contrary to us I'm hearing someone saying, hey, they say ancestral spirit, ancestral spirit. Let me inform you at the cross, everything that was written contrary to me, even if it is your great great grandfather that entered into that agreement with Satan over my life, at the cross, it was taken out it was cancelled it was taken out of the way it was nailed to the cross there is therefore now no condemnation tell satan go and check your record he will search and search and search and search they say, where are the issues we raised against this man for years? They say, I'm sorry. At the cross, blotted out. When they carry my fire, it's now empty. Blank. 
So we don't have any evidence to accuse this man again. He said, that's what happened at the cross. When you were crucifying Jesus, you didn't know that your weapon of oppressing Brother Billy was also included when you were tearing things. It had been torn. Sorry, sir. You can oppress others, but not this man. That's why thousands could fall by my left, tens of thousands by my right, never comes near me. Others are saying, hey, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. Where they are shouting, he's coming. I just go and sleep so cool. And you know when I'm passing the devil, sometimes me and him will meet too. He looks at me. No problem. I have no business struggling with him because there's no problem. He can do it all on one. Go away. Sometimes he may, he, may, <laughs> he may do something to my car. I laugh. I say, that's all you can do. Sorry, you missed it. Blotted out. Answered. Before we take your question, let's read that from Good News. Good News, sister. He cancelled the unfavorable record of our debts. With its binding rules. Yes. And did away with it completely hmm. by nailing it to the cross. And on that cross, on that cross, Christ freed himself from the power of the spiritual rulers and authorities. He made a public spectacle of them by leading them as captives in his victory procession. Praise the Lord. Where is the Living Bible? Who has been reading Living Bible? Yes. And plotted out the charges proved against you. He blotted out the charges proved against you. The list of his commandments which you had not obeyed. The list of God's commandments that you have not obeyed. Who was keeping that list? Satan. Satan. He will tempt you to tell a lie and he will quickly put it in his log book. And say, on so so great, in so 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 place, Christy, instead of telling the truth, he exaggerated, signed Satan, the accuser. He has a logbook. The list of commandments that you have broken, I don't know for how many years. You forgot, but Satan never forgets. Go ahead, mom. He took this list of sins and destroyed it by nailing it to Christ's cross. Amen. Yes. In this way, in this way, God took away Satan's power <laughs> to accuse you of sin. And God openly displayed to the whole world Christ's triumph at the cross where your sins we are all taken away. Amen. That's living by um, Julius, you read New English Bible for us yesterday. Do you have Philip's Modern English? Okay, read your New English. Let's see how it sounds. He has destroyed what was against us. Yes. A certificate of indebtedness expressed in decrees opposed to us. He has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. Disarming the rulers and authorities, he has made a public disgrace of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Praise the Lord. Now, you see that passage, I mean, that version was introducing something. I don't know how to put it. He said there was a certificate of debt hanging. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. On your neck, there's a certificate you didn't see hanging on your neck. 
It's a certificate of debt, of indebtedness. Everywhere you go, the kingdom of darkness, they are looking on your neck. They see, they say, oh, this man, our property is with him and we must deal with him before he goes. So they rush at you. You say, what have I done? What have I done? They say, what have you not done? Don't you see your neck? He said, I can't see anything. He said, he's there. You know, some years ago, there was this uh, ultimate power that uh, Manzion did, uh, Agbaranla or something. You remember? You remember Bosse? Is it Bosse in that, uh, in that drama that went and entered into a covenant with uh, some demonic activities and they put a mark on her face. You remember? No matter how she tried to wash it, no way. And as long as they are wanting to assess her, they only need to look into that thing and she's, she's, in, their, she's in their grip. But I thank God. At the cross, that certificate was torn apart, cancelled, nailed to the cross. As you see me now, nothing's on my neck. No identity with Satan. No ground for accusation. So you see how Living Bible said, in this way, God took away Satan's power to accuse him. Yes. We're taking your question quickly. That sister has a question. Praise the Lord. Go on quickly, quickly. Please, my question is from what you are from what you have just said, the reality we are being faced is that I think for most people from the east, we discover that most time we try to organize what we call a family deliverance. We are a situation where things are not moving in the family. And uh, somebody who is like born again now comes and says, I think why this is not moving in this family is that we need to do family deliverance and maybe invite some prayer warriors and all that and they will now come and do prayers, do family deliverance, maybe renunciation of what the great grandfathers has done. And the truth is that at the end of the day, God come to, you know, a lot of things changes after that. So I'm trying to marry it. It's why is it that even that believer who possibly raised that suggestion that other family members but is being affected by the things assumed to be done by our ancestors. So why is why is the family deliverance that is going on? It, based on what you have said now, honestly, if you have gone to the cross honestly, and everything is finished. Honestly, where is the Bible passage that leads you to that? You see, there are many, many, many lucrative errors. Very lucrative. Jesus didn't practice it. We didn't read it in the New Testament. But because it's lucrative, people run after it as if the cross has not taken place. I, want, I was going to give you two years to go back to that family for you to see that it's an endless matter. You will soon need another family deliverance. It never ends. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Do you notice that whenever they are talking about all of those things, they never refer to the cross. All the passages they will be quoting for you is in Deuteronomy. 
as if Jesus had not yet come. And as if demons, they are so localized that they cannot attack you in London. So they are asking you, go and ask your mommy where they bury your umbilical cord. So that they can pour anointing oil there so that you can be delivered. This is Pentecostal witchcraft. You see, those of us that came from witchcraft background, we know it. Jesus delivered us from those dumb idols. How can I go back there? Do you know that the principle behind all these things you are dealing with is the spirit of fear? And the Bible says the devil because of fear of death as subject men unto bondage on their lifetime. We are going to deal with that very soon. So, but I want you to first hear the word of God. What does the word of God say now from what we are reading? Am I the one who is saying it? What does the word of God say? Having cancelled all the written quotes the certificate of death that was written against you. What did he do? He took them out of the way. Sister, let me tell you now, there's nothing on your way again. There's nothing standing against your progress if you want to progress. If you want to move forward with God, nothing can stop you. In fact, my own way is clear. All that matters for me now is to know what God wants me to do, where God wants me to be, what God wants me to engage myself in doing. Once I'm doing that, no demon anywhere has, they don't have my name in their record anymore. The ancestors that they are connecting me with, the one that they deliver, what happened to that one? Is dead. The one you see here now is a brand new person inside. And the kingdom of darkness has no power over it. The first thing I want you to do individually today, get committed to the truth. I told you to begin with something I said, from now on, you must take your bearing. From where? from what Jesus has done at Calvary. Everything anybody say, drag it back. You say, how does that tally with what has happened at Calvary? Are you getting me? You know when people come to threaten you and say, 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 say something, it's just that, <laughs> thank God, thank God. People like us, we were born in the shrine. Look at the family shrine. Look at my palo. Only God can tell you how many bere was made on this head. It was made every year, not once a long time. We bath in all kind of water. Snail water, tortoise water, all kinds. But when Jesus came, he blotted out all those ordinances. He nailed it to the cross. Discarded it and set me free. I need not to go back to anything. And that does not make me to stop sleeping in my household. Are you hearing me? That's no, in fact, I'm sleeping here. They are doing their shrine there. When I need them to pray, their things scatters there. They come back and say, as you are scattering, as you are scattering our thing. 
I said, what have I done? They say, your prayer is scattering what we are doing. If I am the light, light doesn't run from darkness. But I'm hearing all those, your prophet telling you, don't go home, oh, don't go home. Oh. Don't go home. At least in the next three years. And if you are going to go home, seven days, drive fast. You wake up, 1 a.m. every day for seven weeks to confront the seven spirits. <laughs> they look for all those special, special numbers so as to instill more fear inside you like this, you unstable soul. They say seven times seven times seven minus seven <laughs> is something. So you are shivering and say, hey, oh, ah, oh, oh. So they have given you prayers that you wake up, you are reading. You know what they are doing? They are disconnecting you from your source. They are bringing you under a different bondage, but in the name of prayer. May the Lord deliver you from this afternoon. I want you to know that at the cross, what did Jesus say? It is finished. If you dare to take the word of God as it is, I say you will come back with your own testimonies. Because there's nothing left to do that he did not finish at the cross. It's finished. And when he sent his disciples out to go and preach, give them a clear word. All these things you are talking about, I like to confront such prophets. In fact, you know, they say, we're going to so and so to do some prophetic works. We're doing prophetic works. I say, what does that mean? They speak high sounding. I will soon read a passage to you before we finish. There's still a passage you are going to read in Colossians and we shall move on from there. Praise the Lord. Now, but not only that God took away the certificate of death around our neck. Look at verse 15. Can you read verse 15? What did he do? Please stand up and read for me. Verse 15. And having disarmed the principalities and the authorities... Of them, yes, triumphing over him by the cross, triumphing over them by the cross. So let's take note again at the cross. Not only was my old man crushed, not only was the certificate, the ordinances, the handwriting that stood against me was cancelled and discarded. Another thing happened at the cross. What was that? Jesus disarmed principalities and powers. And he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross. Did you hear what we are saying now? At the cross, my old man was crushed, number one. So the same question was dealt with so that communion with God became possible. Number two, at the cross, all the lists, all the records, all the handwritings, all the certificate of death that was hanging on our neck was what? Blotted out, cancelled, taken out of the way, nailed to the cross. Number three, 
the principalities and powers demons satan and his hosts something happened to them at the cross what was that they were disarmed excuse me what's the meaning of disarmed they were rendered powerless everything they were carrying together as their weapon was taken out and jesus made a public spectacle of their defeat at the cross i want you to know that at the cross satan was publicly disgraced publicly disarmed how i beg god that you will take your bearing from the cross when you take your bearing from the cross and satan knows that here is a brother here is a sister that is living in the consciousness of the transaction that took place at the cross he will run away from you he knows you know and if there's anything i can i can see the devil tries to do is to make the preaching of the cross to appear foolish do you know that many of you you preach if i were to ask you an average pastor here when last did you preach an effective sermon on the cross of jesus christ do you know that for majority of our present preachers we do not know honestly anything to preach about the cross the only time i hear people talk about the cross can i tell you eh during easter and it's not something serious but do you know our misunderstanding of the cross when anybody has married and his marriage is not working well he said bro there's nobody without a cross just regards this woman as what as your cross that's your own cross <laughs> that's your cross If somebody is sick and he has gone from one hospital to another and nobody could help her or him, what do we say? Say, take your cross. It's your cross. That is your own cross. The devil makes us to see the cross as a problem, eh? as a difficulty, in fact, even the people that seem to have preached the cross so much, they preach the cross as suffering. They made it to appear as if all the cross is all about is suffering. I want to tell you that's a black maid of the cross. The cross is the power of God. The cross is the greatest place where many, many impossible things were settled in our midst, in our lives. The cross was the place where Satan lost his power. And I want to tell you, he does not want us to preach the cross. The passage I quoted to you at the beginning, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, he said, Paul said, the Jews, what are they looking for? They are looking for signs. The Greek, the philosopher, what are they looking for? They are looking for wisdom, high sandy intellectualism. That's the trouble most of us are faced with. You are faced with 
wanting to show signs because people have come say show us so you find yourself preaching preaching miracles rather than preaching Jesus you see yourself say okay uh, seven steps onto having breakthrough breakthrough in business all of that so sometime for one year you have been preaching all kind of things that has no relevance with the gospel that will have set men free and whensoever you think that oh important important intellectuals are now in church you not think you will want to deal them with what with high standing wisdom then you stand up and say well oh, today uh, according to um, William Tyndale of 1680 you quote that you quote that then suddenly you quickly go into Greek said and when you turn to the logos and then because you wanted to prove that you are highly educated and you know something you first quote something in Hebrew and then when you finish is that even in the world of politics uh, Socrates was quoted by president <laughs> all of that when you are finished saying all of that thing half of your church members are sleeping the intellectuals are nodding their head then you are finished presenting this presentation that has no life all because you are struggling with the challenge of those who look for sign, those who look for wisdom. But Paul said, what do we do? We preach Christ and him crucified. Christ, the power of God. Would you like to commit yourself that by the grace of God, You are not going to just walk out of this meeting. You want to walk with God in the light of what has happened at Calvary. Praise the Lord. The last thing that I want to deal with about dealing with the transactions of what has happened at the cross, I'll deal with that as a last point for now. At the cross the prince of this world was cast out hmm. there is no other instrument that God has designed to confront the world system and to destroy it than the instrumentality of the cross it's so painful to me it's painful I don't know how to express my pain to you but the pain I, I have discovered running in my spirit all the time is the fact that the weapon that God has given to us to confront the world and to bring the world upside down is what we have cheaply thrown away and we were going to the world to sharpen our implements with their own fire do you know that whether in the Pentecostal churches or the mainline churches or evangelical churches I found a matter here I found that day by day we are losing confidence in the gospel somehow we are gradually a 
accepting that philosophy, psychology, motivational speaking is more authentic than the gospel. Some of you are sitting here. Something tells you that your church, people will not come to your church if you don't employ motivational psychology. Some of you imagine that the only thing that we gather people is if we bring in music. And this is a music that has nothing to do with Jesus. This is the music of the world that we think we gather the people. We lost confidence in our own instruments. And we seem to be begging, we want to become the poor adaptation of the world system. May I tell you, brother, if you really want to be in marketing, you have no reason to be in the ministry. Please hear me very well. If you want to be in marketing, there are marketing strategies. There's the psychology of marketing. There is the sociology of marketing. That you go and learn part of the philosophy of marketing is what we call packaging. Nobody cares to know what is in the pack. If the packaging is what? Is attractive. So I see that when you want to, even when you want to set out your meeting, you want to invite people, you are more concerned about packaging. The first packaging is the packaging of yourself. So as I'm going on the road, I see men of God. They snap with themselves and you see their wife, they are there together. This is a woman that they are quarreling every time in the house. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Some of them, their marriages have almost totally collapsed. But on the billboard, But look at brother Paul. He said, I preach the gospel not with enticing words of human wisdom. So that I do not empty the cross of his power and of his effect. What some of you don't know is that all those sugar-coated language you now bring to the pulpit. All those motivational psychology you now bring to the pulpit. All those words, I call it rhythms, rhythms. And I realize that I now have many, many brilliant preachers that have what I call cachets catchy words catchy phrase they just bring it from somewhere they just launch it wow. and then the people will stand up and clap their hands you don't know that while you're doing that you are rubbishing the cross and you are emptying it of its effect when last did you preach and people broke down in tears? Do you know that majority of what you are looking for in your preaching now is what? When last did you see any serious man of God in the New Testament preached and the result was that they clapped for him? Last, 
did you preach and people could not sleep over the night because their hearts were pricked Because you are not looking for that. You are looking for soothing words. You are gradually becoming a soothsayer. Who is a soothsayer? Who is a soothsayer? A soothsayer is one who says what suits people. What is soothing? As they are walking in, a fornicator is walking and say, I can see all over you the glory of the Lord. I can see all over you. What did you see? You are not seeing well at all. Now, the cross is God's power to confront the world and to defeat it. It is at the cross that the prince of this world was cast out. Now, the cross, even though it appears foolish to philosophers, to those of us that have been saved, it is what? The power of God. The cross, let me inform you, it might not come with eye sounding language. But anytime you teach and preach the cross, there is a violent reaction. Every time, the cross, because the cross is confrontational, it confronts sin. He confronts Satan. He confronts the world system. And he confronts everything that stands contrary to your life. Violence is what you experience every time the cross was preached. But when the cross had been preached effectively, may I inform you, conversions is permanent. Anybody that became converted because he saw the cross do not easily go back. You don't go back. But all those who never encountered the cross and you say they were converted by explanation, by promises that they will become great, promises that they will become prosperous, they are strangers to the kingdom of God. Do you know why? Unless the corner wheel falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. The cross brings death so that we can experience the power of resurrection. How do we work with God? I want to say again, we can only walk with God when we take our bearing from what has happened at Calvary. So permit me to stop for this time and ask you to do two considerations. The first, you do not honor the cross by simply wearing it. The cross was not for decoration. The cross was an experience. And I must keep experiencing that cross. So when Jesus said, whosoever will be my disciple, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. He was talking of carrying a death. And as our brother Gwinga was speaking this morning, I was pointing to the fact that following Jesus is a very critical prerequisite for serving God. 
and if be made conformable to his death is the only means of releasing the power of resurrection that will make us effective in the ministry then I want to say to you that the experience of the cross your experience at the cross is not worth to discard it's not worth to keep aside you must grow with it you must travel with it so when we say I am crucified with Christ we are not just talking that is the reality oh Paul said let nobody trouble me do you remember it said something like that I bear in my body look you've got to become dead not only to see you must become dead to the world and the world must become dead to you in order for you to work with God into his works how I pray that the Holy Spirit will just give you understanding of this because it's, it's, it's difficult for me to be able to say what my heart is yearning that you will run away with from here I need men that are dead only dead men can preach the resurrection message those that are dead they are already dead in their own lives to sin that has happened by the grace of God sin has no more dominion over you hallelujah but not only that they are dead to see they are dead to the world they are dead to people's opinion they are dead to the flashy things of this world they are dead to those things that make others to run up and down like like mere puppets If a big man comes to your church now, let's imagine that a governor just walk here. Do you know what will happen? Everybody will be running up and down. Excuse me. Governor is here. Governor is here. Governor is here. Governor is here. Then you will forget what you were preaching. Abby? Then you will run around. Say, okay. Uh, your excellency the most important man in Anambra State <laughs> in Venue State <laughs> uh, and he has come here with his first lady is the mother of all women in the land we are really fortunate to have the great potentate of the state coming to share some little time with us out of their very busy, busy schedule. So people of God, what do we say to the excellency that has just arrived? And just before I can continue what I was saying, you are always here every week. I can always speak to you any other time. Let's have the governor bring his goodwill message to the people of God. And he will submit the pulpit to a wicked sinner. And he will take this pulpit, consecrated altar, only to announce politics. And when he's about to go, it's not that he's coming for service all along. Go. Once they finish there, just to confuse you, you know, sir, and uh, in my honor as the chief executive of the state, I have seen that uh, in this uh, church there is no borehole, and um, I have. I'm going to direct the commissioner words to come and uh, put a borehole here 
Everybody will clap for him, clap for him, clap for him. Excuse me, why are you clapping for him? Because the money you want to use for that ball who is not his money, is our money. How do you clap for a thief? For what? So you will submit the pulpit. And when the man is going, he will not finish the service. Once he finish, his protocols are moving up and down. They say, governor has to move now. Governor has to move now. And as he's moving, even the man of God, he leaves the altar to go and escort him and pursue him and say, your excellency, thank you for finding time to come and all of that. He has finished our service. The, the God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth had been discarded. Jesus, who went to the cross to die for us, had been brushed aside. Why do you do that? Because the cross has not finished, has not dealt with you. What an opportunity! When last will you have opportunity to knock his head with the word of God? You have no other place where you can speak, but here God has given you a platform. And you stand up there and say, well, I, I learned that His Excellency has just arrived. Please get him to sit somewhere so that we don't disturb the service. God is here in His holy temple. Let all the earth be quiet before Him. <laughs> and you take the word of God. Be it known unto you. That there's no salvation in any man. There's no salvation in politics. There's no salvation in a politician. For there's no other name under heaven given by which any man can be saved apart from the name of Jesus. God who put men in place, he raises and he downgrades. You are here today, tomorrow you are no more there. Mr. Governor, God gives you opportunity to be on, the, on, on, on stage today, but tomorrow you will not be there. You know you are not governor yesterday, and tomorrow you are not going to be governor. What will you do with your life now? Let's bow your head as we pray together. Uh -huh. Sharp. Because we have the weapon of ministry by the cross but I found that the church has lost confidence in her weapon we would rather borrow psychology borrow motivational speaking borrow sociology borrow ideas of men as if the bible is insufficient So, we will read Colossians chapter 2 now. We have been reading Colossians, but I want us to finish my discussion now with Colossians 2, verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9, and verse 10. You say, but why did we start from verse 11? And we are now returning to verse 6. It's because verse 11 was that insight that brought us to the basis of what we are going to be claiming in the verses here. I would like to read now. Are you ready? As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. In verse 6, are you there? So, do what? Walk you in him. 
rooted and built up in him established in the faith as you have been taught abandon daring with thanksgiving beware lest any man spoil you through what philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ for in him dwells how many things all the fullness of the Godhead bodily and you are what completing him which is the head of all principality and power can we read that from Amplified Bible is there any Amplified reader here yes go to Julius let him read Amplified Bible for me as we have therefore received Christ even Jesus the Lord so walk regulate your lives and, con and conduct yourselves in union with and conformity to him let's take a bit of that repeat I'll go with you step by step as you have therefore received Christ even Jesus the Lord wait do you know that yesterday yesterday something was taken out of you what was that the old man in exchange another person came to live here who is that person is Jesus I want you to note that before we go away from here as you are going back from here you are carrying Jesus it's not a mental knowledge I'm talking about oh, I'm talking of the personality of Christ is here sincerely speaking if you ask him any question say Lord Jesus what will you have me do he will be there I know many many times all you have told all you know is the Jesus in heaven but what is the mystery of the gospel Christ where in you Christ living speaking teaching praying preaching but where that's the gospel so as you have therefore received Jesus Christ the Lord go ahead Julius so walk so walk regulate your lives and conduct yourselves in union with and conformity to him as you have received Jesus Christ the Lord when we talk about working with God the word work means regulate your life conduct your life in conformity in union with him and in conformity to him is that what you have read for us yes that from now on brothers and sisters are we are you hearing me this experience you have had here is a great experience for me listen this experience god allowed me to step into it and for years and years and years and years it has remained unbroken the power to live above sin is not your energy is because of who lives in you he said whatsoever is born of god overcomes the world this is the victory that overcomes the world our struggle no. our struggle no. our prayer no. our giving no. our running up and down no what is it that overcomes the world our faith and who is he that overcomes that's the scripture who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that jesus christ came in the flesh victory to overcome sin and to overcome the world is a recognition 
that he who is me now, who I'm carrying about now, is not a sinner. The man that is living in me now, are you hearing with me? What did I say he is? He's not a sinner, he's holy. Can I be holy? Eh? Why? Because he who lives in me now is what? Is holy. Oh my God. Am I communicating with you? You see, the righteousness that will be manifesting in my life now is not my righteousness. Whose righteousness? It is Jesus' own righteousness. So that as you are going now, if you see somebody on the way, oh, can a dead man help somebody? Can a dead man help somebody? No. Who is going to help somebody now? It's Jesus. So you'll be asking, Lord Jesus, what will you do for this man? And as you let Jesus live his life, but in you, the result will be that people will see the victory of Christ. They will see the glory of Christ. They will see the love of Christ. They will see the patience of Christ. They will see the humility of Christ. All the fruit of Christ's life will begin to manifest because it is him at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So, regulate your life in union with and in conformity to him. Oh, am I... Uh, uh, is somebody understanding me here? So, now, when you come here, for example, when you come here, maybe you think we are struggling to do something. No. Don't struggle to do anything. It's only what Jesus wants to do. If he doesn't want to do anything, do you know what I normally do? I just sit down for me. Carry him anywhere he's going. Julius, do you know that as you are going back now, whom are you carrying? Jesus. Who will preach on Sunday? Jesus. It will be Jesus. We have experienced that for the past 33 years. Effortless. The mystery of the gospel is not those who are trying to live for God. What's the mystery of the gospel? Christ living in you. Have I communicated that? Oh my brothers, sisters, are you hearing this? Who is a Christian? The kind that God is looking for. Who is the Christian God is looking for? Christ but in a human container. Baba pastor, do you know the pastor God is looking for? Eh? Do you know? Who is he? He's looking for Christ, but living, preaching. Where? In this body. When people came to me and said, Hey, Bible, please pray for me. Honestly speaking, they don't know that Brother Billy, what happened to him? He died. And I went there saying, pray for me, pray for me. They didn't know that they were speaking to someone else. Who is that person? It's Christ. And all I'm saying, Christ, do you want to pray for this man? If he say yes, how? You will experience ministry in a new dimension from here. Amen. Julius, go on reading. Have the roots of your being firmly and deeply planted in him. Have the roots. The roots of your being 
firmly and deeply planted in who? In Christ. In Christ. Yes. Fixed and founded in him. Yes. Being continually built up. Yes. In him. In him. Becoming increasingly more confirmed and established in the faith. Just as you were taught and Abound. abounding and overflowing in it with thanksgiving. with thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I don't know how to say the exciting thing is that this new life that God has brought you into is the life to live. This is the life that can serve God. Who can serve God? Talk to me. Who can serve God acceptably? Christ. But where? In me. As we go out, get your roots in this matter. May I assure you that everything you need from now till eternity is in Christ. May this meeting mark the breaking forth of your life in the name of Jesus Christ. May your life take a new bearing. You know, I'm very, very deliberate with my prayer for you. The reason is because I heard God say, as for me, my covenant is with you. I was wishing it is possible to transfer something that I have carried for several years and just put it on you. I was wishing that what I have experienced of Jesus and it has worked. It is, it is, it is good. It pays. It is authentic. There is nothing anybody is doing somewhere that means anything. You will read that scripture finish now. You will see that in Christ Jesus is the fullness of the Godhead. Everything you will ever need from now till eternity is in Christ. So what do I do? What do I advise you? Get yourself rooted. Don't stand peripheral on this matter. Don't rush from Boko and say, okay, we have finished that one. Let's go and face reality. Which reality? God has brought you here to give you a bearing. Settle down with it. Take it and take your bearing. The cross was the climax of the ministry of Jesus. In fact, he said, but unto this hour came I into the world. And if that is what heaven planned that will set mankind released and free, why should I discard that and be looking for another place to take bearing from? Brother, go ahead. You are now going to verse 8. 8. See to it. See to it, all of you. See to it. See to it, oh. See to it, oh. 
if you are not reading Amplified and you are reading Living Bible or you are reading any passage, any fashion, see to it, yes, that no one carries you off as poor or makes you yourselves captive by see his... See to it that nobody carries you off yourself as a spoil or as a captive yes by his so called philosophy by his so called philosophy and intellectualism intellectualism you know some of you will live here now and then you go to somewhere and they say something something shan something 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 shan something something shan something something shan something shan 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 something shan and when they are not dealing with shan they talk about something kali Something, something, Kali. Something, something, Kali. Something, something, Kali. Something, something, Kali. If they are not dealing with Kali, they are dealing with something, something, Zim. Something, Zim. Something, something, Zim. Zim. Something, Zim. Something, Zim. You know, and as a Sandy, Shan. Zim. Ka. Ka. Zim. You say, Ka. That's a great teaching. There's nothing great about that. Christ and him crucified is all you need to succeed. A prof, you have two PhDs, isn't it? Please give him microphone. Sorry to. I just have not told him to talk now. But I normally put people on the spot. Tell us, honestly speaking, what have you discovered? about this new Christian, new Christian life that God is pointing to. After you have spent so many, many years reading two PhDs in theology, in ethics, please tell us. After I finished uh, my studies, a lot of people flocked to me for help. And uh, they used the term the one would have spiritual oversight over them. But I realized that uh, I was giving them head knowledge. I could not affect their lives. When God exposed me uh, to life in Christ, I first of all carried life myself. And now I had something that I could say to them that could help them and help their, their lives and their families. But in the past, I really could not affect them. I had nothing tangible, nothing uh, substantial, something, nothing that could help them, uh, that could help them. But even me, myself, uh, there were so many gaps in my life. I had knowledge, I had education, but my life was not what it ought to, to have been. And uh, the Lord dealt with my own life and corrected a lot of things in my own life. And I started to have meaning in life. And I knew why I exist. There was excitement about living. Was there something I was living for? Praise the Lord. My friends, I know you are aspiring to become a professor. I know. I know guru, 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 you are doing like this. So that you can say, yes, Reverend Doctor. Thank you. I don't discourage you. As much knowledge as you can get, get. But when you are finished, you will soon discover that they are worth very little compared with the excellence of knowing Christ and becoming conformed to him. I know as a young person who is still climbing the ladder, there's always something behind the curtain that you think is there for you. So you are always looking for it. Those of us that are coming from behind the curtain, 
we want to inform you there's nothing there. All you need to have a fruitful life, a victorious experience, and a rewarding ministry is Christ living in you, working in you, teaching in you is the hope of glory. You see, as I'm dealing with the cross, it's difficult for me to deal with something that I have carried for over 30 years. I found that the cross makes you dead to your shame. Some of you, you are so conscious of your inferiority because you are not yet dead. You are so apologetic, say, well, you know, I didn't read. Who is listening to you because you read? Do you know that what matters is whether you carry Christ come or not? Because you are not dead to looking for human applause. When you come on the pulpit and you see somebody who has heard you preach the same message maybe uh, somewhere last, last six months, something tells you, say, hmm. He will think that I have nothing else to say. So what do you do now? Just because you saw somebody there. What are you trying to do now? You try to change. Because you want to appear new. You are not dead. What does it matter? If Jesus in you decide to say one word 20 times in two years, what's your problem? Are you living for human applause? Are you living for the clapping of hands? Eh? See to it, brother. Go ahead now. See to it that no one carries you yourself off as a spoil or a captive. Yes? By so called philosophy and so called philosophy and intellectualism. Intellectualism and vain deceit. Vain deceit, I do fancies and I, plain nonsense. I do fancies, plain and nonsense. Following human tradition. Following human tradition. Men's ideas of the material. Uh -huh. Rather than the spiritual world. Just crude notions. Crude notions. Following the rudimentary. Rudimentary. And elemental teachings. And elemental teachings. Of the universe. Uh -huh. And disregarding disregarding the teachings of Christ the Messiah amen see to it see to it there are many many philosophies many 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 high sandy intellectualism lucrative nonsense high sandy nonsense Sometimes I'm sitting down there and I'm listening. I say, what is this man talking about now? Thank God that I've understood a little English. When I see them twisting ordinary words that had no meaning. But they say it in such a manner that the whole congregation of ignorant people are standing up. They say, yeah, mm, yes, 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 how? Mm, anointing. I say, what is there? What are they doing now? Nothing empty noise. Are you beginning to see that many of our preachers nowadays, they don't read Bible anymore. They will quote half of a Bible verse. They say, close your Bible, let me tell you something. Then he's gyrating from one corner of the pulpit to another corner of the pulpit and he's running up and down and he's doing like this and he's doing like this. He had planned to remove his coat before he left home. 
He planned it. It's not that it happened suddenly. He knows. And he had already told somebody to wait to catch it. So when he does that, does that, does that, does that yes. Mm, ah, there's the anointing has come. Which anointing? Nothing. 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 High sounding nonsense. You know why I'm drawn to talk to you? It's because, as for me, God says, my covenant is with you. I have a plan for you. I have a future where you are going. There's something that I want to make of you. Some of you are still young. I brought you in because there's something I want to do with you. Don't become a spoil. Don't become a captive because of some so-called philosophy, high-sounding nonsense. Sometimes some of you are reading books of people that have no testimony. They have written a book. You can't trace their life to anything. You can't trace their marriage. And what they wrote has ruined many lives. But that's the kind of thing you are quoting. You have not read your Bible enough. See, since we have been laboring over this meeting, did you see that we are still just been digging passages? And you are saying, but you mean these things is in the Bible, they are there. Why don't you go back from this meeting? And take a decision. I will study the word of God. I will pursue Christ. What he did for me at Calvary. I'm going to run with it. You have just finished verse 8. Go to verse 9. I would like you to finish up to verse 10. And then I will also finish. For in him. In Christ Jesus. The whole fullness of deity. The whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, yes, continues to dwell in bodily form. It is in Christ. I wish God helps you to understand this. The fullness, the fullness of deity, the fullness of the Godhead. All that God the Father is, all that God the Son is, God the Spirit, everything in the fullness continues to dwell in Christ Jesus in bodily form. And where is that Christ? He's here. Go on reading. Giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you are in him uh -huh. made full and having come to fullness of life in Christ you are you too are filled. You too you are filled. With the Godhead. Uh -huh. Father. Father. Son. Son. And Holy Spirit. And Holy Ghost. And reach full spiritual station. And he is the head of all rule and authority. Of every angelic principality and power. May the Lord bless you. I want to release you on this. I want you to pray about this. In order to walk with God into his works, where do you take your bearing from? What has happened at the cross? Unless you take your bearing from the cross, you don't have a right life that can walk with God into his works. Unless you are a living testimony of what the cross has accomplished, your ministry is weak. Your ministry is ineffective. You may talk big, but there will be little of eternity in what you have done. I want to pray that the Holy Spirit I don't want to ask him to make you restless 
but I want him to make you hungry for more of himself. I want to pray that there will be an unquenchable thirst in your heart from this meeting to know Christ. The kind of hunger that came on Paul, he said, everything that I used to have, I can't them but what? Rubbish that I may know Christ. I want to pray that that will happen to you. I want to pray that from this afternoon, your greatest testimony will be Christ in me. What will excite you most will not be anything else but Christ who lives in you. And that when you go to preach, you will lose consciousness of everybody else. Your only concentration will be Christ and him crucified. May God deliver you from looking for money. That amen is not much, have you? Because some people say, ah, no, 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 no. I want money. I wish that God will help you to invest your time on getting this treasure. You can't have Christ and be poor. You cannot carry this kind of treasure I'm talking about and be a beggar. In the areas of what your life will need, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. There's no problem about that. May your appetite for Jesus become unquenchable. May you lose taste for everything else that is, that is empty. May Christ become your preoccupation. May you also come to that place where Brother Paul came and said, my endless expectation and my hope is that in nothing will I be ashamed, but that in everything, whether by life or by death, Christ will be magnified. Where? In my body. That brother came to an understanding that Christian, the purpose of God is Christ living, speaking, teaching, praying, loving, but in me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. As I pray with you, I commit you to God. So much to say, but not so much apart from this man, the man of Calvary, and him crucified. How many of you would like us to stand together in prayer and say, this treasure that you have dropped in me now, it will grow in me until I come to the full stature of Christ. This is a beginning, brothers and sisters. I will hear of you in the future in the name of Jesus Christ. In your different denominations, in your different ministries, heaven will celebrate you. Because, you know, Christ, Christ has come to make his abode in you. And from here forward, his life will break forth. His works will be done. His glory will be your experience. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Lift up your hearts to God. Tell him. Tell him, thank you for the cross. Thank you for going to Calvary. Thank you for all that you have done for me. Thank you. Thank you for paying the price. 
Thank you for the transaction at the cross. The barrier that separates me from a communion with God is crushed. For me, my greatest excitement is that at the cross, what sent me out of his presence was removed and I've been brought in by the new and living way consecrated for us even by his flesh at the cross. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for communion. Thank you for restoration. Thank you for what men cannot do that you have allowed us to touch today. Hallelujah. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above all the heavens and let your glory be above all the earth. Spirit of the living God, I ask that Christ and him crucified will become more and more revealed in the spirit of your people. That Christ will be formed in us. That Christ will mature in us. That Christ will become our message. Christ will become our life. It will become our glory. It will become our wisdom. It will become our power. It will become our righteousness. Parakashando robosa. Maka tauraba sambo robosh. Miriba sando robos kundariba shakara basila. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Please honor your word. There's so much, but I trust you that you give increase. That these men will go, they will do well. They will do well in the name of Jesus. They will do well. They will do well. They will touch the secret of victory. They will touch. They will touch the secret of your life. They will walk in the in the realm of the glory that you came to release. Christ in you. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Masata yakorobos kutaribash. Makatara masanda rabashiba. Marobos kundarabasaila. Yanto robos kundarabasaila. Yeko robos kundariboshiri. Oh God, oh God, cause the anointing of the Spirit of God to break forth upon these lives, to break forth upon them, to walk in the reality of your glory and power. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Makata Subababa. Thank you, Jesus. This day, Lord, we trust you, we stand together knowing, knowing, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with you, that henceforth, henceforth, from now on, we no longer serve sin. We serve the Lord. We serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we are praying. One thing I wanted to do before I close, I want you to ask God. You know, Paul prayed, he said, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. I want you to say to God that, let me never forget. There was a song we used to sing. It said, lest I forget Calvary. Lest I forget Gethsemane. Lest I forget what Christ did for me, lead me to Calvary. It's one of our hymns. But this morning, I just want you to say to God that Christ and Him crucified will become my focus, become my treasure, and it will become my message did you hear me lord that christ and him crucified will become my focus will become my treasure it will become my message you'll be wondering how will that solve the problem how will that bring deliverance oh that is the only thing that brings deliverance let it be so oh god let it be so, O oh God.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. Father, renew, re release within me again. Fresh, fresh momentum to preach Christ. Fresh momentum to possess Christ. Fresh momentum to, 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 to lay hold of him and him crucified. Lord, I ask that because of your promise, give increase unto this message. That this man will run oh, with Christ and him crucified. Makashando Roboscoria Pasam Bayata Rabasila that all the gains of your resurrection, all the gains of what you did at, at Calvary, of your death, will become a living reality in the lives of these men and women, even as we move into your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed.